Kabarakatuhu, mga uktis, this is Princess Habiba Diampuan Saripaudak, the first Muslim hijab. Three, two, one. Salams, welcome to Hijab Mood News, your program for fashion news. Here we have Princess Habiba Saripaudak. She is the news anchor of Salam TV. Salam TV is actually the first ever news network for Islamic content. So thank you very much for coming. Yes, yes, Avian, alhamdulillah. Thank you also for having me. And I am very, very excited to share my story, just like all the ladies that had been in your program. So, mashallah, alhamdulillah, for this another walk of faith. Okay. So, this Islamic content will actually give your daily news for Filipino Muslims. And for those who, ha who haven't heard it, just check it out on Facebook. Because she is awesome in it. She interviews higher people, you know, like the, the most reputable people. So, so how do you feel when you wear the headscarf or hijab while giving us the daily digest? Well, alhamdulillah, you know what? It makes me very, very proud. I, rem I could still remember, actually, the very first day that I sat on the news uh, for my first newscast, wherein a lot of people really, really had engaged uh, with their televisions just to watch me on my uh, on, on my first day at work. So, you know what? Um, I think it's just very, very proud. It's a proud moment, not only for me, but for the Bangsamoro people. A Bangsamoro people are those Muslim Filipinos living in Mindanao. And uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, we're very, very happy about it because it's the first time no, that uh, they have that uh, Muslim representative on the TV for the first time in the Philippine history. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. And, you know, Filipino Muslims, they live in Zamboaga, right? And then they live in Cebu City, too. They're in the northern sides, right? Okay. Yes, yes. So there uh, needs to be more mm -hmm. representation. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, of course. We have 13 ethnic tribes and uh, one of which is where I came from, Amranao. And I saw a few people that you've interviewed. One of those are from uh, Zambanga. Uh, she's a Taosug. So that's another kind of group. So uh, yeah, Alhamdulillah, I'm very, very glad that I, I had the time to join you. You have also the time to catch up on us. So you know what? Uh, just want to add, no? I just want to add one more thing that uh, when usually wearing a hijab and delivering it uh, on the news, uh, and then we're talking about the national media mainstream, the thing is, it, it makes us very proud. Uh, wearing the hijab is, is the very biggest uh, uh, contribution so far that a Muslim woman uh, can, can do so far. So alhamdulillah that we can have the chance here in the Philippines. Yeah, and, and the Philippines is actually predominantly Christian, is that correct? Yeah. Hmm. Awesome. What are your concerns for Filipino Muslims in Manila since um, it, it's kind of a minority and the history is that, um, uh, you know, it was Muslim, but then, you know, something changed. Yeah, so, uh, well, mashallah, alhamdulillah, a uh, long way back. Uh, history, history in the books, stories from our elders. You know what is very different from today, um, but in a good way. Alhamdulillah, we are now uh, being recognized by the national government. Not only that, but the international itself, we are being recognized just like you. You guys found us here in the Philippines. In short, uh, we are already visible in the eyes of the uh, foreign lands. So um, right now we have few concerns, like for us Muslim ladies wearing the hijab, Still, there is the uh, fight for the self-crisis for the women. Sometimes other younger women, to be specific, uh, they still find it very, very awkward to wear the hijab on the streets, on public, or at work, or going to school. They think that, um, what if they will not be uh, accepted by the uh, society? Sometimes others would think that they will not 
be accepted at work because of their hijab. And we know a few uh, women who are uh, suffering from this kind of uh, discrimination, from this kind of uh, styles that we usually have that kind of uh, motivations. Uh, we, we really encourage them to, to reach uh, on us. So for me, for example, I do it very personally. I message few people I know who, who reached out to me and uh, just gave them few advices that uh, there's nothing wrong with wearing a hijab, that in fact, wearing a hijab would really put you in a good position because Allah will guide you. Alhamdulillah for that. Yeah, Alhamdulillah for that because because the hijab that I've read is like, um, it actually puts you on the right place. Is that correct? Yes, right yes, moment. that's it. That's it. Yes, again, that's true. What kind of asset does Filipino Muslims see to have in terms of its hijab fashion styles and its trends? So, so do they follow it or do they actually follow the black abaya thing that, that people have been uh, talking yeah. about, about Islamic, you know, <laughs> Islamic stuff? You know? Yeah, yeah, no, no problem. I really like this uh, conversation. Um, well, anyway, Aviana, here in the Philippines, uh, we are actually... Um, wearing any styles for example you guys from indonesia had this uh, new trend of wearing the hijab or clothes uh, we adapted because we have a lot of muslim business women uh, men at the same time business people who are uh, adapting uh, your uh, modern styles. since because i think here in the philippines we don't have that kind of uh, uh, wardrobes yeah so uh, it is only available in malaysia indonesia unless you go far as Dubai, Saudi Arabia to bought abayas and uh, other modest dresses. That's the only thing that we can wear those. So in short, here in the Philippines, what we wear are from Malaysia, Indonesia, something uh, from uh, other places or branded. But if it's branded, we make sure that it has to be very comfy. It is uh, very loose, yeah, and it is very long. It, you know, it's, it's a, it's a uh, long sleeves or it's a blouse. Here also, you can find a lot of women who are niqabi, not only hijabi. So there are also niqabis and also... Uh, yeah, a lot of women, not only here in the Philippines, but to be specific here in Luzon, you can see a lot of women roaming around wearing abayas. So usually uh, the same. This, I think it's just the same with other Muslims around the globe that uh, others who are very strict with uh, Islam, they would really wear uh, abaya. So for me, sometimes when I go out, uh, I want to feel very, very comfortable. I really wear a bias. And alhamdulillah, since I am also a haja, so I think it's all right for me to wear uh, the abaya also. Yes. And just, just to note, actually, um, all Muslim women, they don't need to wear black abayas, right? Just, just to have a statement, like, you know. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, well, I've heard about that when we were in Saudi Arabia, that actually it is uh, the, uh, what do you call this? It's the Muslim community that dictated that it has to be black. Uh, well, in the first place, I find it uh, really simple also. And uh, the conversation was uh, quite okay, all right with me. Why? Because uh, wearing a plain collar, I think, uh, will, um, uh, what do you call this? Uh, will really not attract other people, especially uh, uh, equal uh, women. So for example, they will not be jealous of how you wear your pretty dress or your pretty abaya. So in Islam, we have that kind of saying that as much as possible, we have to wear low keys, uh, hijab and dresses so that we can avoid fitna or uh, the uh, jealousy from other people. Uh, I think uh, this is also very, very um, commonly known in other Muslim countries that as much as possible, we just have to wear our dresses or hijab as plain, as simple as it can be. So it's all right for me, you know, wearing the plain hijabs and uh, the plain in yes that's correct and it's about culture it's not about religion in fact when there when there are many misconceptions is that correct 
Uh, well, uh, you could say that uh, it's Islamic at the same time, and at the same time, it's uh, what the culture that dictates. Let us be re reminded that uh, we have to always uh, separate uh, uh, religion apart from the culture, because our culture is really, really different uh, from our religion. Our religion, Islam, it's very, very perfect. And uh, if we include our cultural practices, subhanAllah, there are so many, many things to be corrected. And our Muslim scholars know this, and we both know this. Of course, and um, we're humans after all. We're all very yes. different. Will Salam TV offer modest fashion insights? Uh, well, I get, uh, yeah, well, we have uh, a lot of women around the globe. Uh, well, for me personally, I usually uh, follow also um, fashionistas who are based in Malaysia, Indonesia, Kuwait, uh, Abu Dhabi, for example. There are great influencers who wear just as modest uh, as a... Uh, modest uh, models i think mm -hmm. so sometimes i just look at it wow it looks great it looks nice so um but most of the time i would pick very simple dresses very simple pieces like you know uh, i can just wear uh, loose pants and then loose tops he drop him after all that's <laughs> done already with my kind of sense of fashion also salam tv will not exactly offer modest fashion insights Hosted by you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, well, yeah, Alhamdulillah, we have, I have sponsors like uh, the Zia wow. and uh, the <laughs> City Asia Muslima Apparel, uh, the um, Lil Boutique, uh, oh, Lil, Ajal, Lil Ajal Boutique uh, here in Metro Manila. Alhamdulillah for them. Uh, they support me with my different hijabs. Also the hijab house also. They support me with different kinds of hijab. Usually I, uh, they, I, I really don't uh, wear so much stuff uh, because, you know, in, in TV, for example, I, uh, I am wearing just uh, the uh, hijab most of the time and most of the time I'm just wearing suit. But for the Salam uh, TV stories, like when we go around the globe, uh, I wear dresses and uh, Alhamdulillah for my sponsors, the ones that I've mentioned, they're very, very supportive of it and they keep on... Uh, uh, giving me dresses, you know, uh, make me select dresses that I want. So these dresses are also from Indonesia, Malaysia, Dubai. So, you know, I'm very, very happy that we could actually mix and match our wardrobes with other Asian countries. Wow. Indonesia, Malaysia is all the modest fashion pieces like over there. And, and Hijab House is based in Sydney, if I've heard. Wow, mashallah. Yeah. Uh, well, well, we have here in 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 the uh, in the Philippines, we have, uh, but it's a small store. Uh, I'm not sure if they have the same uh, name. So, but what I know is hijab house. Yeah. Right. Um, do you feel the need to express your opinion on the news at Salam TV? Yes. Yes. Uh, there are times when when my uh, wisdom is needed. So, uh, for example, if there are cases that I think that uh, they've said are uh, misquoted about the Islam or about the Muslim Filipinos here in the Philippines, of course, that's the time that I step out uh, out of my comfort zone and talk to my producers or my director. Alhamdulillah, I, I, I am given that kind of freedom to talk and uh, have my opinion on the table. Yeah. Your wisdom is greatly needed, actually, because you're in the front line and yeah, of course, and, and all the things. <laughs> um, what kind of modest fashion fits do you love to wear? Uh, something that is loose, I think. Yeah, anything that loose and beautiful yeah so uh, i'm really into the dresses um the abayas yeah um and of course loose pants and blouses that's my um uh, fashion <laughs> all right dear hijab house come on um please tell us the colors that you would wear for every interview that you will arrange especially your headscarf um, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, uh, well, for example, in our meeting today, I wanted to wear something that is uh, very women, uh, pink, <laughs> as you can see, and uh, flowers around my hijab because it's also today is the International Women's Day. So I'm very, very happy that I am with you today. So uh, I just wanted to have a kind of uh, idea on my mind. And then uh, usually if it's on a uh, setup, uh, it really depends on what is the situation. If the situation is about dark stories you know I, I wear something that's black and if something about freedom for example uh, usually i wear blue or white something about islam i would go on black abaya black hijab or something uh, green because uh, our uh, salam tv and salam tv logo uh, represents green and of course islam uh, is said to appreciate green at the same time uh, usually, really, it depends on what mood, uh, what is the uh, issue. Yeah, there are many um, negative issues surrounding today, <laughs> coronavirus, and yeah. plus your outfit will brighten up the day, actually. So why do you love this job as being a news anchor? Do you love representing hijab fashion on such a popular television channel in <laughs> Tom TV? <laughs> Yes, mashallah, alhamdulillah. Thank you for that, Avian. You know what? I think it's not about representing the hijab fashion. I think it's representing deeper, and that is Islam. I wanted to represent it on the TV that we Muslims knows how to talk. We Muslims had the brain, had the guts. We Muslim <laughs> also brain. had the say, you know. We Muslim women are not oppressed. You can see we are sitting here, our husbands, brothers, fathers are not dictating us not to do that, for example. But because it is about Islam, we are allowed to talk and be seen. I remember one time Mufti Menk, uh, when he was here, I've done several interviews with him. And yes, I am wearing hijab and uh, abaya when I interview him. I asked him once, I said, is it all right that I am being seen on TV? And uh, what I know is that in Islam, women should not uh, be seen on TVs. Their voices mustn't be heard by uh, an opposite sex, right? And the uh, Mufti Mink, alhamdulillah, uh, by the wisdom given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told me that, sister, if you are advocating, you are talking about Islam, and you are proud because you are a Muslim and you are talking about the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad uh, وسلم, and the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is nothing wrong with what you are doing. And I think uh, I still walk with that kind of words from uh, the highest Mufti Mink. And uh, that's where I am very, very happy to see it, to be always on screen, to represent not only the hijabis around the globe, but of course to represent that we have Muslims. Uh, you have your Muslim sister here in the Philippines, Muslim hijabi, and there are Muslims here uh, representing uh, around the globe. So Alhamdulillah, we are just very, very glad that we are, we are given this chance by the government that we can sit around, wear our hijab or abaya anytime we want and talk about our religion and the issues in uh, our uh, hometown and um, uh, you know, uh, free, uh, speak freely of uh, the goodness, greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah for that. So uh, again, we are very, very glad not just to represent the hijab, but it is to represent Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course. That's the perfect answer from Mashallah. the who wears the hijab herself. So talking about issues, because you've talked a lot about issues, um, the <laughs> issues that have a hikmah around it, like... Um, that have a lot of positive insights because we we have a responsibility to actually try to make things right. So what is the most concerning subject to the Muslim community in the Philippines or Filipino Muslims and, and the hijab fashion, if you want to talk about hijab fashion or something like that? 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, for now, Alhamdulillah, uh, the hijab, uh, referring to the hijab, we now have a uh, anti-discrimination bill that is being uh, worked out now in the uh, House of Representatives. Alhamdulillah, we have good congressmen who are fighting for the struggle, not only of the women uh, representation, because, you know, you could still hear stories about the stigma that uh, women who wear hijab are sometimes being oppressed, you know, uh, others were not being entertained at work or at school because they're wearing hijab. So Alhamdulillah, we have this kind of bill that is now being passed into uh, the, uh, what do you call this, in the House of Representatives. And at the same time, we also have the bill that recognizes every February 1, which was last month, to be the National Hijab Day here in the Philippines. So Alhamdulillah, this kind of very simple uh, acts it really has a very big impact to every Muslims here in our country. Third, of course, is that Alhamdulillah, we have now the Barm government, which our people back in the uh, autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, the Bang Samoro people really fought for this one. They wanted the Muslim Filipinos be recognized by the government. And for how many decades, Alhamdulillah, we now have the uh, Barm or the Bang Samoro autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao, wherein our government right now, the uh, national government is giving the um, barn people its rights, its privileges uh, to, uh, to lead our uh, Muslim uh, Filipino community people. And we're very, very glad about this because uh, this had been like a long, long, long decade of uh, talks, you know, cycle wars actually, because this has been a very, very big struggle to a lot of our Muslim leaders here in our country. So for now, Alhamdulillah, uh, little by little, I think uh, we are now fighting this uh, issues. And uh, fourth, we have is the Anti-Terrorism uh, Act. Uh, I'm not sure if you've heard about this, but we have this kind of act already, not just an act, but a law already in Malaysia. And uh, we're very, very glad to be part of one of their um, uh, symposium that we've uh, attended last year. If, uh, oh no, it's on 29, it's last 2019. And this one here in the Philippines, we are now working on this one with this issue. Um, um, it is to counterattack terrorism. Uh, way back in Mar May 23, 2017, we had a very, very sad news that happened in Marawi City, which is marked as Marawi Siege. So after that, the government had decided that we have to strengthen our uh, security here in the Philippines. And one of it is we have to have a uh, law that tackles about the uh, security of the people and the uh, uh, how to counterattack uh, terrorism. So right now it's uh, it's being worked on the table and I wish that the government will really hear about the uh, sentiments, about the insights also of our Muslim and uh, Muslim sisters and brothers about the issues because I've heard that there are still issues ha that has to be passed uh, and that has to be corrected with the said act. This is really beautiful because, because all of what you've been saying is just the correlation between your hijab and your wisdom for the laws and the justice for the Filipino people. Not, not just the Filipino Muslims, but the Filipino people. And, and, and mashallah, um, uh, Princess, thank you very much for coming to Hijab Mood News. And, and I have... Okay, it's stopping. Okay. <laughs> I am so grateful that you've come here, like healthy and and well, alhamdulillah. And hopefully we could hear you your wisdom your wisdom more on Salam TV. And and I'm just speechless right now because because this is hijab fashion the moment uh, a moment of hijab fashion because because i'm a fashion person <laughs> sorry that sorry about that all right and plus we have brains too even if we wear hijab yeah we have the brains but sometimes we look intimidating and and sometimes that actually have a lot of um, positive impacts on other people because we are seen as well yes so thank yes, you very you're right much. about it
Thank you, thank you also, uh, Sister Aviana. And of course, no, I would like to uh, also highlight one of our recent projects uh, just launched this February by the Rotary Club of uh, San Juan del Monte with my sisters, uh, Hani Rohaniza, Hani Somdad, and my sister, Amana Busran Lau. Thanks to Miss Jill, the president. Uh, this is a, actually a uh, non-Muslim organization, but then they highlighted about the beautiful story stories of hijabis and the importance of hijab and uh, again uh, let us not stop wearing hijab uh, as much as possible let us wear our hijab because it is our representation being a muslima uh, without us i don't know how can people on the streets guess if we are a muslim or not because us wearing the hijab would really identify that hey that's a muslim there and of course <laughs> hey. respect Yes, and of course, with respect, of course, to the uh, hijabis, fashionable, uh, fashionista hijabis, of course, uh, we are also uh, highlighting them because uh, it just so happened that they also wanted to have some uh, trends, you know, millennials at the same time. Uh, but uh, alhamdulillah, the important thing there is uh, they cover uh, the what uh, the their aura. The important there is, they, is that they highlight being a Muslim and they are proud being a Muslim, alhamdulillah. So we hope all our ladies, young ladies who are suffering self-crisis, inshallah, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to, um, to fight back this crisis. And uh, inshallah, uh, you will have your beautiful, beautiful way ahead of you. Again, Aviana, thank you, thank you so much, alhamdulillah, for your show and of course for this opportunity uh, with the Modest Manila also. Thank you, thank you so much. And of course, your journal, inshallah, I can't wait to share more stories about you. And of course, I can't wait uh, to meet you, hopefully, in person. Well, Why not? Allah. Visit here inshallah. in the Philippines. Why not? Inshallah. So again, thank you so much. And advance, happy Ramadan. Happy Ramadan. This is Sawam TV's Princess Habiba Diampuan Sari Paudak.